One of the discussions we have is there are things in Scripture that are not obvious. Things in Scripture build thing upon thing, one upon another. It's very often that you get later on in Scripture and things will get said that if you haven't followed the chain of construction through Scripture, it's like, where does it say that in the Torah? How did they get there, here from there? You understand the question? One of the things that's going on, and it's been going on since the garden, certainly it's going on in the book of Daniel, Daniel talks about it extensively, is that there's a rebellion going on in heaven. God not only has a rebellion going on here on earth that he is dealing with, he is also dealing with a rebellion that's going on in heaven because the rebellion in heaven in fact seeded the rebellion that's going on here on earth. For those of you who have been in the military, one of the things that you know is that as you are preparing a plan of battle, one of the key components of the plan is a deception plan. So when they were getting ready to invade Iraq under the first time around, desert storm, desert, you know, whatever desert thing it was, when they were getting ready to do that, one of the things they did is they took the 4th Infantry Division and they put them on ships and they orbited them in the eastern Mediterranean. So as Saddam was trying to figure out how he was going to defend, he's looking at 3rd Corps, which is marshaled down in Kuwait, and he's saying, oh, 3rd Corps, that's what's going to happen. But then out of a corner of his eye, he's got the 4th Infantry Division out here in the Mediterranean, who very well may come through Turkey and come down from the north. In fact, they never did. But that was part of the deception plan. And that was part of the operation order, is the deception plan was, we're going to have an infantry division over here in the eastern Mediterranean to make sure that Saddam cannot concentrate his forces properly against Third Corps, who is coming up from the south, even though that's the main thrust. So, one of the reasons that stuff is not spelled out clearly in the Torah is because God doesn't want his enemies to know entirely what he is going to do until it's too late. And it says in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 4, if they had known that the Gentiles were going to be able to come in, they never would have crucified the heir. So the idea that you can go back to Torah and you can say, where does that, where does that say that in Torah? It isn't in Torah explicitly for a reason. It's because as the thing unfolds and events unfold and things happen, it's like, oh, you mean we shouldn't have crucified him? Oh, you mean by crucifying him, not only do the Jews come in, do the Gentiles come in? Oh, shoot.